and welcome live to beautiful Southern California where it all began 48 years ago as the UCLA Bruins beat Long Beach State for the first ever NCAA Men's Volleyball Championship. Now, nearly five decades later, the wait for the rematch has finally come to an end as they battle once again for this coveted title. It's number one Long Beach State taking on the third seed from UCLA. Let's take a look at how both the Bruins and the 49ers got here. Wonderful matches in the semifinals on Thursday night. Long Beach State knocking out the two-time defending champions from Ohio State, while well, UCLA was outlasting the second-seeded BYU Cougars. Hi, everybody, and welcome. I'm Paul Sunderland, joined once again by my partner, two-time All-American at Pepperdine University, two-time Olympian, Kevin Barnett. Well, two is the theme. These two teams have met twice before. It was Long Beach State winning both, including one here at Poly Pavilion. Big picture, how does UCLA turn it around for their 20th title? I think what we know coming out of those matchups in this season is Long Beach is the best team. They have played to their level all year long, just one loss to Hawaii. However, UCLA, I think they discovered that if they play to their maximum, which has yet to happen this year throughout an entire match, they have an advantage over Long Beach State. I think they're the more physical team. Let's talk about maximums. These are the two best offensive teams in all of men's college volleyball. What makes it happen? Or better yet, who makes it happen? If it's the whole offense, it's the setters. And so when you look at Long Beach State, it's the National Player of the Year, deservedly so for Josh Tuaniga. He will give that offense pace. More importantly for his team, he will carry the attitude. Former football player, he plays with intensity and dynamic leadership. On the other side, for Micah Ma'a and UCLA, it's a change in role this year. Ma'a was a hitter and a setter in the 6-2 the last two years. Now he's just a setter, but he brings that same athleticism to that spot and delivery to the middle. Watch him to make the dynamic set to finish rallies. Coming up, it's the Bruins and the 49ers. UCLA going for their 20th title. Well, Long Beach State going for number two and the first since 1991. First serve, coming up next. The NCAA Men's Volleyball Championship is brought to you by Nissan, innovation that excites. Santa Monica Pier, about eight and a half miles away, or about 30 minutes, depending on the time of day. Long Beach State taking on UCLA. The Bruins under John Sparab, who won a national championship here back in 1991, 26 and seven. He went away to earn his spurs, if you will, at nearby UC Irvine, where he won three national championships. 
currently also the USA Olympic team coach. And speaking of that, Alan Knipe, in his 15th year at Long Beach State, coached the United States Olympic team in 2012. He's the 2017 and 2018 AVCA Coach of the Year. UCLA in their blue uniforms. Oliver Martin, six foot ten, redshirt senior middle blocker. We'll get things started. And off the block and on the sideline, and the first point goes to UCLA. And will we see a challenge right away? That's the question. Only three challenges per match, so they are worth their weight in gold. Now they reversed it. Wow, they reversed the call. The linesman talked to the second referee. That ball's out of bounds. Yeah. Not a lot of argument from the UCLA side. No, no, you not at all. You can generally tell by the player's reaction. Everybody's excited. It's for the national championship. It'll be interesting to see how they use the challenges, too. Men's coaches do not have it during the season. Fortunately, these two men have had it internationally. Overpass coming to Falco. Number 11 in white last year's National Player of the Year. Rips that for the opening point for Long Beach State. Best three out of five sets. First four sets to 25 points. You know, there's been a lot of women's volleyball on television the last several years. 15 substitutions in their game. But the men play strictly by international rules. Only six subs. It makes for a different looking game. Here's Tuaniga. And Tuaniga misses that ball over the end line. Josh Tuaniga, six foot four junior out of Long Beach. He was, as you mentioned, Kevin, this year's Player of the Year. Yeah, he deserved that honor. Watching him set his team a number of times this season, the pace was outstanding. Micah Ma'a, six foot three junior out of Kineohe, Hawaii, will go back to serve. And seeing one on one tattoos the end line. Paul, somebody asked me today about what do you do as a player when you're coming into this national championship situation? How do you treat your day? I said, listen, you're 80% of the way ready to play during the day. You're trying to distract yourself. When you get to the warm-up, you're about ready. When you step out on the floor now, it's who can gain that 20% back to be 100% comfortable quicker. Both these teams have been kind of climbing to this situation. DeFalco misses that ball out of bounds. TJ Torrey James DeFalco, six foot four junior out of Huntington Beach. Both of these teams really like to rip the jump serve. Jake Arnett, six foot ten senior, and Laura Belinda will go back to serve. Good touch there. Look at the craftiness. Josh Tuaniga, the creativity there, setting the ball with just one hand, Kevin. Yeah, he makes some amazing plays, and not, even, not only the plays here, but the choices <laughs> as well. Look where he put that one. A little flash and flare from Tuaniga. Ensing's been playing with him since, oh, 13 years old or so. Kyle Ensing, number five, already with a couple of kills. He averages 3.5 per set. Oh, get used to that. Out of the middle, number 16, Dinan, Kofi, Jimma. Here's why this is dirty. Bjarne Hoos is there. Look at him. The middle is there. No chance. Dana Jimma hit over 500 for the season. That was number one among all NCAA volleyball players. And he was a huge part of the offense as well. It wasn't as though he did it on a limited number of sets. He off the edge of the block and out of bounds. Bjorn Hoos, undersized, six foot one senior out of Norway. He's going to be your X factor for Long Beach. You pretty much know what you're going to get out of number five, number 10, and number 11. You don't know necessarily what you're going to get out of that other guy. If Hoos has a good game, Long Beach wins. Three-headed monster for Long Beach State. DeFalco to Amiga, and this young man right here, Kyle Ensing, six foot seven junior out of Valencia, a first-team All-American, and already Long Beach State with three service errors. UCLA has only earned one point. You have to go after it against UCLA. If you let them set the middles, you're going to be in real trouble. Here is Hessenauer back to serve. Christian Hessenauer, six foot five senior. Hoose again. Ripping down the line, number four and white. There was not a lot of room down that line, and who's turned it perfectly. That's not a bad block from Ma'a. He's in a pretty good spot. That's just a thing of beauty from Hoos. Long Beach State hit 379 on the year. UCLA just behind, second in the ranking at 351 efficiency. Easy jump serve. Off the 
edge of the block and out of bounds. DeFalco was there, but give the kill to Oliver Martin. Martin also had an outstanding season, not used quite as much as Jimma, but also hit up into the 400. Dylan Misery, 6'4", junior, out of Holbrook, New York. UCLA off to a pretty good start serving. Insane ripping into the cross court. Four quick kills already for number five. Kyle Insane might fly under the radar for a lot of volleyball fans. They hear his name, but they hear more about DeFalco to Aniga. But Kyle Insane takes some really high and smart swings. I saw him in the semis just snap balls to spots with some pace and get Long Beach out of some jam. Freshman Simone Anderson on to serve. Oh, step blocked by DeFalco. This is what Long Beach wanted to do. They wanted to get the number 17, Christian Hessenauer, early. They feel like if they can shut him down early, they had stand a pretty good chance. They did the same thing to Jake Haynes of OSU, Ohio State in the semis. Got to him, kind of took him out as a factor. Haynes came back as the match wore on. That serve is missed by the six foot eight freshman out of Denmark. A lot of international players sprinkled throughout college volleyball, BYU. A couple of starters from Brazil and one from Puerto Rico. Nothing new for the Cougars. That's been going on for 20 years. It has for Ohio State. Both of their outside hitters from France. UCLA a chance to convert. Good soft block. DeFalco tucking inside, but Martin unable to make the defensive stab. You're watching number 11 in white, T.J. DeFalco. He is going on to an international career. He had offers after this year, after he spent time with the national team playing at the highest level over this last summer. Had decided he's coming back to school. He'll be back next year, but then he'll be on the international stage for a long time. There's Tuniga, two, two second time through the service line. Yeah, loud in here. You could barely hear the whistle. And Long Beach State and head coach Allen Knight saying, wait a minute. Our players are saying no net. That's one of the areas that can be challenged. Well, and don't do this early. Don't start arguing with the referee. Somebody touched the net. It happened. Allen Knight even coming up and telling his players that happened. Move along. JT Hatch, spectacular play defensively at the Libero position for UCLA wearing the off-color jersey. I was talking to John Spira, fine head coach for UCLA, about the Bruins serving strategy. He said, well, we just want to be really aggressive. I go, but John, you miss five per set. He said, he said, we looked at the numbers. When we miss fewer than that, we have less success. So you just got to serve tough. In the modern men's game, if you let teams pass the ball perfectly, you're in desperate trouble. DeFalco dialing up the ace. What makes T.J. DeFalco special? His overall game play is outstanding, but his arm, he's not the highest jumper. He's not getting way off the floor. You're not going to notice him in warm-ups in that respect, but you will notice his arm, his ability to snap and locate the ball. 52 aces on the year now for T.J. DeFalco and Long Beach State. We'll step aside. The 49ers over the Bruins, 11-7. Beautiful early evening here in Westwood, the home of the UCLA Bruins. Let's take a look at the rules for this one. Mentioned best three out of five sets, only six substitutions. The challenge system will be in effect. Two timeouts per team per set. Perfect 
Jimma missed that ball out of bounds. One kill, one soft block, one error. That's a win for Long Beach thus far in terms of slowing down number 16. Jimma was 13 of 16 on Thursday night with only one error. You can and call win over BYU. Feet. Or you can call him Friday if you want. <laughs> I will. More on that in a moment. Thank you, Kevin. That ball missed out of bounds. Danon Kofi Jimma, six foot eight sophomore from Ontario, Canada. We were talking to him the other day at practice and asked him about the nickname Kofi. He said, well, my father is Ghanaian, and it's for Friday. Kofi is Friday. And uh, somebody asked, uh, well, what percentage of you know the Ghanaians are nicknamed Kofi? He said about a seventh. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's a very quick answer. He's a very bright young man, and maybe has a bright future in the music business. Yeah, the music business is going to be a tough choice for him. He's an excellent producer as well as artist. Big lead here for Long Beach State. Amato, the middle blocker, back to serve. Boos with a wonderful stab. Another good touch in the middle. Excellent job on Jimma. Locked straight down on the outside, getting the stuff. Dylan Misery with some help from Jimma. So far, the stats from the first two times these teams met have really been a factor here. Long Beach beats you with defense. They'll get some blocks, but they beat you with defense by creating opportunities for their offense. UCLA has not been able to really get a hold of the blocks they needed. We've seen them hit twice and be just out of bounds. That's the first one they've gotten for a point. Jim had three aces in the semifinal. Uh, under pressure. Three ball pass and that tucked inside by Martin. And Hoos is helping a ton in that middle. That tells you how much it was on the scouting report. They are giving up a lot to the right side of the court with that left side blocker nearly standing next to the middle. They know that's where UCLA wants to go. Jim was just a sophomore. He was a first team All-American this year. Uh, his serve has made incredible strides this year. Smart shot by Ensign, taking a little off. That ball called out by the linesman, down by our up referee. That's just this high, nice swing. Look at how high that ball is. It's not about how high you jump, it's about how high you can contact the ball. And I've watched this young man contact the ball high time and again. Ensign leading the way for the 49ers along Beach State. Five kills on seven swings. And that's going to be a service ace. That ball was filthy. Full speed, not a ton of topspin. This is not a true ball. It's got a little curve to it. That one's tough. You're trying to judge the angle as well as whether it's in or not, how much spin is it going to come down, and it gets on you in a hurry. Ensign, 32 aces now on the season against just 55 errors. That's pretty efficient. Make it 56 errors. Well, I've been totally impressed with the numbers in terms of the hard servers on that side. If you go down to DeFalco, he has 51 aces coming in on 79 errors. Remarkable. A 2-1 to one is generally acceptable, even 3-1 to one nowadays for some of the servers. That is ace to error ratio. There's Christian Hessenauer, the six foot five opposite for UCLA. And he plays opposite in the rotation with regard to the setter. It's been pretty quiet so far. They really need him. Kuniga taking the offense into his own hands. He picks his spots. Josh Tuaniga feels this game. Listen, he's been playing it since he was a kid. His parents met in a rec pickup game in 1987. He's grown up on a volleyball court. He can feel the flow of a play, feel the flow of a rally, know when to insert himself. Does a wonderful job with that. Long Beach State now leading by five. Hessenauer unloading. Good delivery by Ma'a. And notice the pace. This is something you said has worked on this season with Christian Hessenauer, who's the odd man out the last two years in that 6-2. They've tried to go faster to number 17 on the right. And if you're going to help in the middle that much, that right side's open. Good adjustment by Ma'a and the Bruins. There is misery. Perfect pass. Anderson with a kill out of the middle. Number 13 in white. Mentioned out of Denmark. And we talked to Alan Knight about how this young star from Denmark came all the way to Long Beach. He said, look, they're international recruiting services now. And he kind of recruited us. He came to visit us. And before he left Long Beach, 
he had signed his letter or committed, I should hey, say. I don't want to get like? anybody in trouble. You find something you like, jump on it. The Long Beach State has the three stars that we've talked about. You know, everybody goes, wait a minute, they're so solid. They've integrated four new players into their starting lineup this year. Yeah, they remind me of the Chicago Bulls between the two generations. Fister is dug by Hoos. Ball set too tight. And Ensing is rejected. Second stuff block for UCLA. You notice that Long Beach does not let you get the easy points. They don't make mistakes with their ball handling generally. There was one, and they followed up with another nice play to extend the rally. You're going to have to make multiple plays in order to score points on the 49ers. First time that Ensing has been stopped on nine swings. the block and out of bounds to Falco with the kill. Sam Jones quickly came on to serve and he will give way once again as the Libero returns for Oliver Martin. Look, TJ DeFalco, two times an All-American, only a junior. What makes him so effective offensively? Uh, his, his arm is outstanding. His volleyball IQ is unmatched at this level. And he's a kid that can play at the international level in long time already. Gonna try to throw that one down. That's an hour, nicely done. You can hear the touch. High flat off the top of the block. Now, TJ turned. He's a little frustrated. I noticed earlier when he's yelling at the referee after the net call. If I'm Long Beach, I try and calm down number 11 right now. If he gets a little too heated, starts yelling at people, starts getting a little frustrated, he's out of his comfort zone, out of his team's comfort zone. I would try and rein him in just a little bit. Keep him intense, but not over the top. There is Ma'a. And there is Ma'a with some defense. Can they turn it into points? Jimma turning cross body for the score. If you watched UCLA at all this year, you saw Dane and Jimma even from 8 to 10 feet be incredibly effective as a quick attacker. He and Micah Ma'a have developed a wonderful relationship and an ability to connect from places that most middles and setters are not able. UCLA trailed 16 to 11. They have closed the gap now, trailing by only three. Ma uh -uh again, and this is it out of bounds. UCLA is going to live or die by the serve. That is the way it goes for the Bruins. They have a lot of guys who can light it up. It's kind of a three headed beast when you go Misery, Ma uh -uh, and Jimma. DeFalco hit 375 efficiency on the year. <laughs> that is ridiculous for an outside hitter at this level. Absolutely. Ridiculously good. DeFalco taking a little off. A good arm and a volleyball IQ, deadly. Remind me of Pasquale from Spain years ago, an opposite, about the same size as TJ, who would dominate people with his array of shots, his ability to read situations and score points. Long Beach State leading once again by five, 20 to 15 over the Bruins. Just underway here in Los Angeles for the 49th NCAA Men's Volleyball Championship. Number one, Long Beach State, a leader by five. ESPN's coverage of the NCAA Championships continues tomorrow with the NCAA Beach Volleyball Championship at 2 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN. For more information, go to NCAA.com, the official home of all 90 NCAA Championships.
Well, these two teams coming off very different semifinals. For UCLA, it was a battle they controlled early and then kind of faded in the middle. They would have to have a dramatic pickup in the third and then the fourth to take that victory over BYU. For Long Beach State, they had a terrible matchup with Ohio State. They won on small margins around the stat sheet. And the only big win in statistics in that match was for OSU. And it was aces. They had 10. The Falco with the chase. Side Arnett's wearing number 15 in blue registers his first kill. You think he's a real key yeah. for UCLA's hopes to pull off what would be an upset? Here's the simple thing: Arnett's kills high balls. You pass the ball and set the middle if you're UCLA. That wins the match for you. This kid did an outstanding job coming in to serve in the semis. Grant Molesky, 6'9", freshman out of Long Grove, Illinois, had an ace to win it to send him to the finals. Subbed in twice, two aces, one error. Ma'o uh -oh with a dig right on target. Off speed by Hassenauer, cuts it too sharply. Into the net, unforced air. You're going to have to convert those plays, those opportunities. Long Beach State is efficient. They don't let the ball hit the ground. They score points in transition. You have to convert your opportunities when you have them. Lewis Richard from Los Angeles on to serve. He has some heat. Heck of an arm. And he's got some margin here with a five-point advantage. Insing again off the top of the block after another dig by DeFalco. Okay, the point's going to go to Insing. Look at that set. The location of that set. It's going over his right shoulder. He's got to put it towards the net, does Josh Tuaniga. He lays it up in perfect rhythm for Kyle Ensign to kill. Ensign now 6 of 10, hitting 500 efficiency. Richard again. Jim tries to blow on the slam dunk. Each state done a pretty good job of slowing him down. Absolutely. I think Dan Jimma has to keep swinging. Don't get into this dunking situation. They're trying to run a little push with him out in the front. They're trying to push it out across from the middle blocker. I would just get back to tighten him up right next to him and tell him to hit the ball. 49ers two points away from taking the opening set. Hessenauer, nice swing coming right back. A matchup set for Micah Ma'a there. He could have had the easy set to the outside. But Dylan Misery has done an outstanding job. Instead, he went to Hessenauer with Poos in front of him on the right. Well, if anybody can get UCLA back into this opening set, it's Kofi Jimma at three aces in the semifinal against BYU. Perfect pass. And Insane trying to get a little bit cute. Missed that one into the top of the tape, but the lead is still five at 23-18. I like the play call. Long Beach State hitting 455 UCLA. 217. Oh, UCLA's got to have that in Hessenauer. Wow, just a total shank. Set points now for Long Beach. You cannot afford those mistakes in this match against the team in white. Ensing already has one ace. Misery, nice swing over the top by number 12. Look, Long Beach State, most likely because of their efficiency, going to win this opening set. But what does UCLA want to accomplish here late? A little momentum. Score a couple of real points. Dig a ball, get a transition kill. That's going to be the key. They've had their opportunities. Hessenauer misses that one. And Long Beach State looking for their second ever NCAA championship is on the board here at Poly Pavilion. Third meeting of the year. Long Beach State won the first two. And Alan Knight knows where his bread is buttered. A little friendly bump to Josh Tuaniga. Tuaniga, TJ DeFalco, along with Kyle Insing. Long Beach State takes the opening set 25-19.
Yeah, with the background of the iconic Santa Monica Pier, Long Beach State. Spinning on all cylinders, 25-19 over UCLA. Out hit the Bruins with three aces to none for UCLA. Back with Kevin Barnett, I'm Paul Sunderland. This is a very talented but still relatively young Long Beach State team. Let's take a look at the players of the year the last couple of seasons. And they've got two of them in TJ DeFalco last year and two in Iga this year. No wonder that they've been number one all season with the addition of some really solid help around them. Yeah, no doubt. When you're carrying this kind of talent, if you look down the names there, Nick Scherzen, who we just had eliminated in the semifinals, he's going to the French national team. Jeske Sander, those guys are on the national team for the United States. Crab is playing professionally for the United States on the beach. These two guys, DeFalco and Tuniga, are destined for the professional world, but they still have unfinished business. These guys felt like they could or maybe should have won a national title already before their junior season. This has been a maturation process for these two guys along with Kyle Ensign. Pauley Pavilion in UCLA hosting the Men's NCAA Volleyball Championship for the 15th time. I think these teams are quite similar in the way that they got to this matchup in that UCLA also feels like over the last couple of years they could have won a national title. So I don't think either team is shocked by the fact they are here now in terms of their thinking to start the season. John Spira asking himself a lot of questions right now. Misery in our nets didn't get much going and it's got to be a shocker that Jimma would hit zero. Two kills, two errors on eight swings. This for the best attacker in terms of efficiency in all of college volleyball at over 500, 533 to be specific. Yeah, first time these two teams met, UCLA, who you talked about their offense all year, they hit 191. The defense for the beach carried the day 10 more digs than UCLA had, plus Long Beach hit 343. Underway, second set. There is uh, Tochima and that ball just on the end line. And boy, did he ever need that one. Swing at everything. If you're Dan and Jimma, you hit everything right now. No more fancy stuff. No more pushes where you're out of your comfort zone. Stay next to the setter and go right over the top of everybody like you've been doing all year. That ball was close, but clearly inside the end line. Left side, DeFalco inside the block and away from our nets. Jordan Molina did a nice job of keeping Long Beach in rhythm in the middle of that rally. And he delivers the set here. The sound is what you want to rewind and listen to when T.J. DeFalco contacts the ball. That nice, crisp contact is what you want to hear. You know a player has power and control. Here's Tuaniga. 28 aces on the year. Stuffed. Nick Amato, six foot six senior, with a stuff block there for Long Beach State. So mission accomplished for Long Beach in their game plan. They wanted to get to the opposite early. They have done that. Hessenauer has four kills, three errors on 11 attempts now. His number is shrinking quickly. He struggled a little bit in the semifinals against BYU. 14 of 39 with 10 errors. That's not good enough. Jimma threw a seam in the block and down. Two quick kills for Kofi Jimma. Jimma had more than 400 attempts, well more than 400 attempts on the season. So it's not only the hitting percentage that's impressive, which is generally the highest on the team by middle blockers, but the number of times he got set, he was used like an outside hitter in terms of number. Yeah, that's a lot of swings for a middle attacker. Back row combination, VR Fuse with the kill, number four in white. Yarnus is the guy it's hard for other teams to pay attention to. You have so much else to worry about with Ensign and DeFalco. He played very well in the semifinal. In spite of being six foot one, had a couple of big stuff blocks against the 6'10 opposite for the Buckeyes. Tough serve. On the back row quick again, TJ DeFalco. And this is what will kill your opponents. You get the opportunity with the overpass. Put it away, first ball. Another perfect crisp swing from T.J. DeFalco. Against one blocker, the Bruin blockers on the outside not helping at all. Misery just kind of zoned out on the play. 
Well, everything's clicking for the offensive line beef right now. You know, Hoos has gotten a couple of kills, so you're now all of a sudden a little bit of attention to him. You've already been burned by Ensing to open this match, who's hitting near 400 at that opposite spot and is the kill leader through one set. So you as a blocker have so many things going through your head. That's Josh Tuaniga playing with you. He's pulling the strings. You're, you're the puppet. <laughs> Ball served just out of bounds by Jimmy. Yeah, Tuaniga, as advertised, very creative, moves the ball around, really good deception, runs a wonderful offense, as does his counterpart that we featured before first serve, Mike Amata. Here's Amato. I like his attitude. Number 10, Josh Tuaniga. It's enough to carry his side and intimidate your opponent, and not enough to be a distraction. Falco came out of the middle back. That's a pretty good attempt there and good communication, but unfortunately missed it in the top of the tape. Hey, that's two guys who played together forever. Yeah. This is two guys who have played together since they were 14 years old, playing on the 15s, communicating in the middle of a play. It's just a miss from him, but an excellent opportunity those two created. They played together as juniors and seniors at Huntington Beach High School. In spite of the fact that DeFalco was homeschooled throughout the course of his high school career, their record, they were undefeated. That's right. Pretty good team, though. Everything and zero. All six of the starters on that Huntington Beach High School team are now playing Division I somewhere. Here is Ensing. He was the early offensive star for Long Beach State. And with a service ace. Bruins are in danger of getting a little overwhelmed. I might call a timeout right now if I'm John Sprague just to stem the tide. You know he's thinking about it. Four aces now for Ensing and Long Beach State. None for UCLA. Hessenauer ripping down the line. Eisenhower just saved UCLA a timeout burned in the second set. And not because the score is all that big. You're not down by that much, but the momentum, you can feel it slipping away. UCLA needs to make a couple of plays here. Yeah, Long Beach State has been superior in every phase of the game so far. And that's what UCLA hangs their hat on from the service line. And yesterday morning, and for the last couple of weeks or so, it has been Dylan Mystery working on his serve. It's been a missing piece for the Bruins from the line. When they've been good, number 12 has been putting pressure on other teams. He was asking specifically for coaches to come over and give him input yesterday during practice. Ball tight to the net and off of Anderson and out of bounds, but all keyed again from the serve from Misery. And now the crowd is up, so there goes the momentum for Long Beach. If you're the 49ers, you're going to have to try and reestablish. If you're, you're UCLA, you're trying to grab it right now. You're trying to ride it for a few more points. And it may not be in this rotation, but over the next couple of rotations. One on one. Hughes off the block. What a pass, what a pass by indeed. DeFalco. Indeed. DJ DeFalco is the best player in NCAA volleyball this year, the best overall athlete and his ability to play different phases of the game. No question of that. Spent last summer playing for UCLA's head coach, John Sparrow, on the U.S. national team, which is where he will be again this summer. As a matter of fact, John Sparrow and T.J. DeFalco have a meeting one-on-one -on -one next Tuesday to go over the summer schedule. <laughs> Volleyball Nations League coming up here, starting in about two weeks' time for the men. Starts in about, about a week now for the women. The international schedule butting up against the domestic collegiate. Program. Tied at eight, second set. Long Beach State won the first. Nice touch. Nobody up. You know, I think that ball didn't have to go over. I Mike agree. Amaha said over, 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 but that counts as one contact when it caroms through the block. They're not going to call you for a double, or pardon me, two contacts when it caroms through the block. You can still set that. I agree with you completely, but that was the end of it. Another good choice by Tuaniga, Ensing now with seven kills. Here's Anderson. Jimma, there's just no way of stopping that. And it's a very unique set. It's not a traditional one. It's higher, it allows him time to unfold. 
Jim is long, and he comes up, and you watch him. Even on his serve, you'll see how long and how much time it takes for him to unfold. He gives a nice high toss. That set in the middle is something learned between he and Ma'a. Tied at nine. And sing again. Yeah, and a little too slow that time for Jake Garnett. He's not finished in time to meet the pace of that right side attack. If he has just a moment more, watch him here. He's still going up and still reaching as the ball's being contacted. You want to be there already. Your odds of getting a quality touch are high. Josh Tuaniga is a high school junior when he committed to Long Beach State. Did not have a jump serve. He was a jump floater. And Alan Knipe said, hey, you're going to play for us, especially as a left-hander. You're going to develop a jump serve. Jimmo with a kill. I think UCLA is okay right now. Early in this set, felt like it might get away from him. I think they're in good shape. Dan and Jimmer with another ridiculously high kill. How high can he touch? He's over 12 foot, around 12 4, 12 3, something in there. Nosebleed territory. Arnitz, number 15 in blue with a service error. And what makes Dan and Jimmer really unusual is his jump serve. Most middles yeah. in the world, juniors on up to the senior level, international play, do not have a good jump serve. They don't have an arm capable of generating the momentum and the contact. This young man is going to kill John Sparrow when they play him in the Seca <laughs> zones a couple years from now. He's going to wonder why he made him so good when Canada's hurting the U.S. Jim again on the wrist away, and there wasn't much real estate. Yeah, he's going to join his national team where he's already had some spot duty, and they are really an up-and-coming international team. Beat the United States in the World League Finals last summer. We have another kid, Sharon Vernon Evans, played opposite this year, had an outstanding summer for Canada. Nearly got in here to UCLA. What would that have looked like? Another 6-8-12-6 touch for him. That ball is tight. Joust coming. Essenauer pushing. What a smart play by Ensing there. Nobody in front of him. And the six foot seven junior out of Valencia with the tap down. That's a really difficult play for Christian Hessenauer. He does a nice job of staying out of the net and staying out from a dangerous situation for everyone going under the net. There is a motto. Long Beach State back on top by one and now tied. You said you like the way, you, you said UCLA's back into this. What have you seen that convinced you of that? They're handling the ball and setting their middles. That's what they're doing. They're making plays flying around in other places. Jimma really helped them get back on track. Both teams with nine digs, so working hard at the defensive end. Mike Ma'a followed through. Easy play to call, net violation on the high flying ma -a. Yeah, he just missed the ball a little bit and followed through with his arm. Watch here, he gets only half the ball, but that's the kind of play that there are a fraction of the world of players that can make that move where you're coming inside, crank your body back, and get some heat on the thing. His, his father, father, Pono, would be happy. Yeah, I was yeah. just going to say, Pono Ma'a, two-time All-American and on the national team for a bit of time. And his, his mother, don't leave Lisa Strand yeah. Ma'a out of there either, a professional player in her own right. UCLA with the unforced air cannot afford that. UCLA much better so far in this second set, hitting 300. And it slowed Long Beach down, brought them back to earth just a little bit. Ensing already with nine kills. And missed that out of bounds. JT Hatch with a good call there. And JT Hatch this season, the libero for UCLA, played outside for a long period of time, including the first time these two teams met. He and Dylan Mystery were the outside hitters. Jake Arnitz was on the bench. It was a small lineup that they had for a long time. They kept winning, but Hatch at libero just provides so many opportunities for others. Good pass again. Oh, what a... Where is Pono Ma'a? He would love that. A roof by his son, number 13 in blue. Perfect timing. You notice he's up there. He's waiting. He's at the top of his jump hovering when that ball is contacted. That's how you do it. Tied at 14. And that ball missed out of bounds by Misery, number 12. A planetary ball. A little side spin. We have come to the media timeout. We'll step aside. The NCAA Men's Volleyball Championships here for Poly Pavilion. Long Beach State up. One set tonight.
Long Beach State won the opening set 25-19. UCLA has come back nicely, trailing by only one here at Poly Pavilion. Long Beach State's only championship was a long time ago, all the way back in 1991. Over on the left-hand side of the screen, current head coach Alan Knipe was one of the stars, along with Brent Hilliard. Yep, some good names in there. Brett Winslow there in the center with the trophy, and on the left-hand side of your screen in the dark black shirt, 91 team back together, had a little pre-event down in Long Beach and bust themselves up here. They were up here for the semis as well, and ran into one of the greats, Brent Hilliard. Both Alan Knipe and John Spira, two of four players slash coaches to win a national championship. Rod Wild at Pepperdine and Bob Yoder at USC, the other two. Good rip into the cross court by Arnitz. UCLA needed that. Quite an accomplishment to win a national championship both as a player and as a coach. Spira also won one as an assistant coach for the legendary Al Skates, who was here at UCLA for 50 years. John Spira is only the second coach ever for UCLA men's volleyball. Transition swing, Arnitz over the top. Dug by Hoos. Good swing up into the top of the block. Slam dink by Jimma. Now listen, the referees sometimes will call this the other way. They'll call you over. This ball's on top of the tape. You just have to have a little bit of it on your side. That's pretty close. You see Michael Maat. He's putting both <laughs> hands up. That's the call. The ball is on top of the tape that the referee generally makes. You see a it so far with a very rare lead here, 16-15. didn't last long. One on one, the Falco with another kill. Yeah, what else didn't last long was the time between the contact from Tuaniga to the swing of the Falco. That thing was on a frozen rope. Six kills now for last year's AVCA National Player of the Year. UCLA 26 and 7 on the year. Long Beach State 27 and 1. Their only blemish, a late season loss in Hawaii. For a very slow start. He has gone with the Barney formula. Just swing away no matter what. Don't get intimidated. Listen, nobody's touched you all year. Long Beach State did an outstanding job early on of getting a hold of him. He started tipping and it went into the net. That's not his game. That is his game right there. Let it come up to you, rise up, swing away. After starting two of eight, he's now seven for seven here in the second. Ensign, one on one, missed it out of bounds. Ma'a will continue to serve the Bruins leading 18-16 and a timeout called by Long Beach State. The Bruins right back in this championship match. <laughs> it's a luxury playing at home. There have been a lot of upsets in Gulf Shores, Alabama, side of the NCAA Beach Volleyball Championships. Florida State beat Hawaii, advanced into the title match. UCLA beat USC in the double elimination format. UCLA will play Hawaii tomorrow morning, and then the winner will take on Florida State for the NCAA Championship. 
incredible amount of volleyball happening this weekend. There's an FIVB event happening about 25 miles to the south, maybe a little further down in Huntington Beach. That's uh, two and a half hours right now if you want to leave. <laughs> two and a half hours? <laughs> well, the difference in this second set, first set side out percentage, first ball side out, or first opportunity to side out for Long Beach, 85% of the time they were siding out. Now only 70% for Long Beach. And UCLA's gone from 66 to 76. So they're all of a sudden on top. And a huge part of that has been Kofi Jimma, who collects another kill there. Eight kills in a row for number 16 for UCLA. Yeah, he was two for eight out of that first set. And now he has 10. Well, and look at the hitting percentage for Long Beach State. Again, the very best offense in the country. 478 in the first set, down to 211 here in the second. Nice dig by Hatch, but it can be nullified by a net violation. Okay, Long Beach State's offense has really dropped off. Why? I think UCLA has done some good stuff with their block positioning, and I think they've done some good stuff with their serve, keeping Long Beach off the net. DeFalco having a good offensive match, 7 of 10 right now. Back at the line. The streak for Gemma comes to an end. Nice dig by DeFalco, scrambling in the backcourt. Oh, and the ball drops. Now UCLA's feeling the home love right there after that rally. That'll get you some pins and needles. That'll run all the way through your entire body like electricity. What a play by T.J. DeFalco. That ball caroming through gives you an idea just how good a player he is. And if you're wondering about the home court for UCLA, NCAA Finals in Poly Pavilion. I'll give you the numbers in just a moment. Quick point by Jimma. This is the 11th time UCLA has played in Poly Pavilion for an NCAA championship. Nine and one previously, their only loss to Pepperdine. Timeout called by Long Beach State. Jimma Micah Ma on the Bruins leading 21-18. Well, you can feel the atmosphere. You can feel this reminds me of playing in the Olympic Games. When you have that crowd just ignite behind you when you Feel the energy in the building like a rock star. Can't imagine what it's like to be a rock star. I always had that argument. Do you want to be a professional athlete or a rock star? I think you can channel things that way. But UCLA right now channeling the crowd, making plays. And they've gotten Long Beach to be a little more conservative in their swings. You saw the last couple of times. It was a net by Jimmy that negated an easy dig. And then it was a transition playoff, another easy swing. And UCLA scoring points. It's definitely been key by Kofi Jimma and his production in this second set. UCLA's willingness, Micah Ma'a's willingness to go right back to him after a rough first set. And that is smart setting for Micah Ma'a. Lots of times, younger setters will have a tendency when something doesn't work in the first set, even if it's worked all year, they start looking for another solution. Don't. Look at this guy. Now he's hitting 471. 471 after hitting zero in the first set. I want to remind everybody tomorrow on ABC we'll have game four between the Warriors and the Pelicans with Golden State up two games to one. Our coverage begins at 3 p.m. Eastern with NBA Countdown presented by Straight Talk Wireless. As always, everything is live on the ESPN app. Drew Holiday, former UCLA Bruins star, having a very good year in the playoffs for uh, the Pelicans and Anthony Davis. <laughs> Anthony Davis is a monster. Just getting word that Boston beat Philadelphia in overtime, so the injury depleted Celtics. Oh! I think if it goes in the crowd, it should be a souvenir. I agree. Just give them away. I agree. The Celtics, anyway, up over Philadelphia three games to none now. Alex Parks. Excuse me, that is uh, Matt Butler coming on to serve. Excuse me. That's an hour. He's heated it up as well. He's gotten off the block a little bit there. I like the direction that Hessenauer gives the ball here. They have a phrase inside UCLA volleyball. It's Hess smash. Kind of like Hulk smash. 
He not only hit it hard that time, he also cut it across the face of the block rather than going right into the meat of it. Serving specialist, I guess we can call him that now after a couple Indeed. aces in the semifinals. Grant Molesky on UCLA must close out this second set. Leading 22-19. Missed it out of bounds. And Molesky actually played opposite the second time these two teams played. One thing about those two matchups, we've mentioned that Long Beach won both. It was in the same week, so I don't know how much we really learned about the development of the teams or anything changing. This is the only real next matchup. I would lump those other two right together. Ensign with a couple of aces already. Trouble here to Aniga with a Fister tap down. And Jealous Girl is known to take early timeouts sometimes. He will take preemptive timeouts internationally to offset uh, a server or a situation. And John Spira does take a timeout right here to Aniga. He's a very crafty center and also very effective offensively as well. He had five kills on nine swings in their semifinal win over Ohio State. UCLA's lead is now just 21, excuse me, 22-21 after leading by three. If Long Beach comes back and wins this particular set, Paul, coming into that third, we're going to have to display something like the World Poker Tour. We're going to put up a percentage chance of UCLA winning the third, and I can tell you it's substantially lower if they let this one get Absolutely. away from them, just momentum-wise. So many times you see matches where a first set is won by a team, a second is close, there's a big comeback, and then all of a sudden that third is a blowout. UCLA looking for their 20th national championship. Their last was all the way, and it is all the way back for a program Indeed. like UCLA. Over Penn State, this was in Happy Valley and the UCLA Bruins. Interesting year. They were not even in the playoff picture and came all the way back through for Hall of Famer Al Skates to win that championship. They won their last 14 matches in a row to take that title. An unbelievable and remarkable run. Al Skates. John Wooden is the wizard of Westwood. Al Skates is the sorcerer of success. I'm, I'm not quite sure what. But at UCLA for 50 years. He'll get to take y'all back to the days when they were using cast off T tops or tank tops coming from the basketball team because they had no money for uniforms for the Waldo squad. And an interesting story about coach skates and money in just a moment. Critical point here. Insane into the cross court right on the sideline. Tied at 22. Uh, he says really in trouble here. Their main offensive weapons are in the back row, and John Sparrow burns another timeout. That was such a good contact by T.J. DeFalco tracking down that soft block. Right on target. Timeout call, tied at 22, Long Beach State leading one set to none. Monday, start your week with Get Up at 7 a.m. Eastern on ESPN with Greeny, Beetle, and Jalen. They'll tell you the potential for the Rockets Warriors showdown in the West, plus how quick the Cavs can clinch over Toronto and how that would help. The old man, LeBron James, how good have they been taking down the number two seed so far? And who won the top sports moment of the weekend? Get Up Monday at 7 a.m. Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. Houston left little doubt after Utah won game two. <laughs> James Harden, Chris Paul, and the rest went into Utah and hammered them by 30 or more. Long Beach stayed on a 3 0 run, and it was a service error that gave them a little bit of breathing room and launched them back to this 22 all tie. Remember, got to win by two. Where does UCLA go here, assuming that they're in system? That's exactly what I was looking at here, Paul. I think if you're in system, you go to the middle. You might even see Ma'a get involved. If it's a perfect pass, he may dump. First set, second set, UCLA is really up their efficiency. But they must, as you pointed out, Kevin, they must close this out. All right, they pass first. Comes 
Hessenauer and Jimma have really picked it up. Seven kills now for Hessenauer. Yeah, again, working against the smaller Hoos. We've seen that matchup benefit UCLA much of this match. Misery's jump serve has been on and off again. He muscled that one. That was a bad toss. Good touch. Arnett into the cross court. This has to be for the Bruins if they're going to win the national title. Jake Arnitz must kill the ball the way he did there to finish rallies, score points. Both teams are out of timeouts. Oh, what a pass. Back row combination. What a pass by the lead row, Jordan Molina. One of those junior college transfers that Alan Knight does such a good job of pulling from the Junior League here in California. Richard on to serve once again. He's been pretty aggressive from the line. Second set point for the Bruins. And we're tied at one set apiece. It was in danger of slipping away at the beginning part of this second set as well as the last 10% of this set. UCLA did an outstanding job of fighting back in both cases, and now we're tied at one. Long Beach State and UCLA, 48 years later, battling for the national championship. Back with more after this. UCLA and Long Beach State tied at one set apiece. Remember, this is the third meeting between the Bruins and the 49ers, Long Beach State. Number one in the nation most of the year won both previous meetings. Back with two-time All-American and two-time Olympian Kevin Barnett on Paul Sunderland. The keys for UCLA to turn that around when they were really up against it. Hey, give it to Kofi Jimma. That's where you've been going all year. Your highest percentage, highest percentage in the entire NCAA attacking program. And who gives their middle nine attempts in the second set? Nobody's able to do that. The reason they're able to do it is not only the passing, but also Michael Ma on the connection with Jimmy. He's able to give it to him from well off the net. It doesn't have to be a perfect pass. 
nine attempts for a middle attacker. That Those are opposite numbers. Those Absolutely. are Kevin Barnett outside hitter numbers. Yeah, passing for myself because I couldn't pass <laughs> the ball. Shanking it off 10 feet, you have to give it to me. But credit the whole team for getting it to Kofi, Jimma, and Ma'a for continuing to stay with that spot. I said in the middle of that set that they had to stay with what's worked all year. Ma'a did that. He didn't start searching for solutions in a pressure situation. Look at how UCLA almost doubling their offensive production. And as you mentioned, Jimma started two for eight in the second set, eight for nine, including his first seven. So UCLA, the number three seed overall at 26 and seven, taking on the top seed, the 49ers from Long Beach State, as we're getting ready for the start of set number three. UCLA's done two things here. They've flipped a little bit of pressure on to TJ DeFalco and Long Beach for the first time, really, in the matchup between these two teams. It was a solid victory. Even when UCLA won sets in the previous two matchups, they only won them deuce, 25-23. That was a little better win that time, not in terms of necessarily overall score, coming in 25-23 again, but in terms of feeling. Micah Ma'a will start things off for the Bruins. Long Beach State has changed their rotation. That ball tucked inside, a fortuitous kill that time by number five, Ensign. Right, you'll see teams do that. They play with the matchups on the outside. They'll spin the pie, they'll spin the wheel. I know Al Skates is sitting up here and charting. He can't stop himself. He's up there in the end line <laughs> charting, watching the game and watching who starts where. I have to finish that story about Al and money in just a moment now that this third set is underway. Speed shot. Back to Al Skates very early on. Al Skates was an outstanding player and had hopes of representing the United States in the Olympic Games. So he went in to legendary athletic director J.D. Morgan and said, I want to coach the team. And, and the athletic director said, Al, I, I don't have much money. And Al said, that's okay. I can't get paid because I, I have to stick, you know, these, uh, uh, these ancient rules. I can't get paid because I want to play in the Olympics. And J.D. Morgan said, fine, you're my guy. You're yeah. hired. <laughs> I'll do it for free. Oh, no problem. Worked out pretty well. Just underway here in the third. Here's Tuaniga. Sky hook. Kareem Abdul-Jabal, another fairly famous Bruin would have enjoyed that one. Well, there's a pretty good video last year of him hitting balls, Kofi Jimmy, just in the gym, and they posted it on social media. And he got a lot of pub for it all the way up in some of the ESPN morning shows. But the big question was, why don't you play basketball? Well, the answer is, he's really good at volleyball now. Oh, nice kill out of the middle by Amato. Doesn't get a lot of opportunities. Hits very efficiently, 462 on the year. First kill, just his third attempt, and that's been the missing piece for Long Beach. They don't use their middles a ton, especially early in the year. They didn't go to the middles at all. It was all pinned. They've worked the middle in as the season went on. That's an important piece. They'll have to bring that back. Does that surprise you? Because they're the best ball control team in the tournament. Well, when your pins are as good as they are, you want to put it out to the hot hitter. Alan Knight told me, he said, that's the thing where Josh is just doing a good job feeling the hot hitter. It's been Kyle Ensign up to the last few swings. Hour looking for hands, missed it out of bounds. Now for UCLA, there's right back into a difficult rotation here. Hour on the right, Misery on the left. No Jimma to go to. Martin is now the middle attacker. Oliver Martin wearing number four at six foot ten, and UCLA gets a break. DeFalco missed that jump serve quite badly as Hessenauer goes back to serve. Now this is where they, UCLA got stuck in their side out game was this particular rotation with the opposite and right back. Let's see what they can do with it before they get to the point where they have to get out of it. Back to back missed serves. Now watch and see if they can immediately side out. This is where they gave up those points at the end of the second. Uh, misery hitting out on the left. Martin in the middle. Hessenauer out of the back row. Championship match. The 49th edition of the men's NCAA finals. Tied at one set apiece. Oh, that's a really good touch by Anderson and finished off by Ensign. Yeah, 
Yeah, this is not the best delivery. That's too far off the net, too wide. Ensign does a good job of bringing in the roundhouse. Good save by number five. UCLA got to get out of this rotation. They're bleeding points right now. Misery will do the job. Dylan Misery, six foot four junior out of Holbrook, New York, lists his hobbies: beach volleyball, golf, serving, surfing, and going to the beach. No wonder he came to UCLA. <laughs> Perfect fit. <laughs> Originally from Holbrook, New York. How's the surf in Holbrook? Over there? There's some pretty good surf on the East Coast. Cold, but good. Oh, it's stuck. Ma -ma going high for the block against Hoos. So if you're UCLA and you can eliminate a factor, get rid of Bjarne Hoos. He's getting some kills and an effective offensive attacker for Long Beach State to start this match. And Dylan Misery's serve has returned. Another tough serve. Saved by Tuaniga legally. And thrown to the floor. Micah Ma'a. Micah Ma'a is an aggressive offensive player. That's the first time we've seen him go solo in this match. Now this save, listen, you can't touch the opponent's side of the court and the ball has to pass outside the antenna both ways, across and then back to your own side. Tuaniga ran it down and gave it, his team at least a shot at that point. And good job by the Bruins to keep concentration and keep playing. What a serve by Misery. Remember yesterday when we spoke to head coach John Sparrow, he said, you know, in these kind of matches, it might be somebody who's not really a star, somebody who really comes up and plays and contributes just a huge match. And right now, Dylan Misery on a little bit of a roll. Well, Dylan Misery wanted to serve back. He worked on it. He's being rewarded now. Three aces. Timed it. Remember that play. UCLA with a couple of opportunities. Yeah, and here's what happens. Misery is going back. Hessenauer handled that free ball in low, so Misery did a great job of calling the play, still being available at D, but that's not where he normally hits. That's Christian Hessenauer's ball on a traditional basis. Now, misery was expecting something much faster. Well, I think it's Misery that's out of rhythm there. He's not a D attacker. And coming right back, Insing with a service ace. His third. Five aces now for Long Beach State. A couple for UCLA. Hessenau, nice offense by the Bruins. Christian Hessenauer has had to be patient in his collegiate career. He sat down for the last two seasons while the 6-2 dominated UCLA volleyball. He was the odd man out. He knew coming into his senior season he was going to have a shot at that spot, and he has delivered all year long. The program, John Spraw, Brad Keller, John Hawks, all saying how proud they are and how happy they are for that young man. High combination, the heater from DeFalco. Well, he has got a whip of an arm. Yeah, his arm is international. Just whips up over the top of it. Constant crisp contact. Continue to be blown away. Nine kills now for the Falco in a very smart play there. That's it right there. So we talked about it, Paul. You asked what makes him special. What did I say? Arm and intellect. There you go. Back-to-back -back plays, both skills. Throwing the ball that time off the Bruins block of Micah Ma'a and John Spira is going to challenge. You can challenge ball off a player, either in the backcourt or off the block. Ball in or out, a net violation or not, and a service football. So we're having our first challenge so far of this championship match. You get three per match, and unlike internationally, where if your challenge is proven correct, you keep it. Now you only get three, and that's it. Okay, the challenge here is not did Micah Maha touch it, it's who touched it last. Was it thrown out of bounds by T.J. DeFalco? In any case, look, you have three challenges. First one that's been used. This is a de facto timeout. 
Yeah, from that angle, I don't know that you're going to get any difference. One of the things that needs to be addressed with the challenge system collegiately is the frame rate of the challenge system. Internationally, if you're used to watching that, you see fingers bend back. I don't know if we're going to get a determination there. Once again, to overrule the call, the video replay has to be 100% conclusive in order to overrule. I thought that was a good one. I saw it live. I thought it was a really good play by DeFalco. What do you think, Kevin? Yeah, I thought it was an excellent play, and I thought it did go off Mike Amaa. We will see. I just want you to go back and on your 75-inch at home, just pause it for a second. Take a look at how high Mike Amaa is in the air on this play. That's your setter. <laughs> Going chest high. Yeah, that's going to be six three. That's going to be Long Beach's ball, and the point's going to stay on the board at ten to eight. And remember, since that miscommunication between Maa and Misery, right? Long Beach has gone on a four one run. Right, but at least John Sprawl with that challenge, he managed to slow that game way down. That was longer than even a regular called timeout. The arm hoose back to serve. Stuck out of the middle of the Falco along with Andershaw. And there's a difference in the matchups. Who's up there with Kofi now? It's not help from Bjarne Hoos. It's help from TJ DeFalco, and that's the deciding difference in that play. Right handed DeFalco. That serve is missed, and Alan Knight telling us yesterday, you know, DeFalco gets the headlines around his offense. But Alan Knight was telling us what a really, really good blocker he is. And John Spraw had talked about that all summer long, about what an excellent pin blocker T.J. DeFalco was. He's a guy who brings a lot more to the table than just being. Ma uh, missing that ball just out of bounds. The Libero, Jordan Molina, number nine in the black jersey for Long Beach State, has been superb. Good communication there off the Ma uh, miss. Long Beach State leading 12 to 9. If you're just joining us, Long Beach State easily won the opening set. The Bruins fought their way back to tie this match at a set apiece. Arnitz into the cross court. Jake Arnitz, senior season out of Esperanza four years ago, said he can't believe that the four years have gone by this quickly and he's going to be done after this match. But he's given himself maximum volleyball. An opportunity to do something that he will remember for the rest of his life, win or lose. Well, this UCLA program. Insing is dug. Hatch will track that down. Smart shot up into the block to restart the point and draws a net violation. But back to Arnitz, now a senior. This UCLA program, look, they've won 19 championships, but the last in 2006. This is a program that's done a lot of changing internally and externally under John Sparrow to get back to the elite level. Yeah, one of the first elite players recruited by John Sparrow is Jake Arnett. There's going to be a challenge on that net violation, so we didn't have a challenge of any sort in the first or second set, and now we've had a couple in pretty close proximity. Yeah, and this is a, uh, actually a first opportunity for Alan Knipe in terms of his collegiate coaching career. Internationally in the summer, when he's been coaching junior teams, he would have had perhaps some instant replay, but that didn't get instituted until just recently in the John Sparrow era. So that is being reviewed. UCLA in the finals for the 24th time. They have won the title 19 times. There's yeah, that's, net, that's against yeah, Long Beach there's State. There's a net violation, whereas Long Beach State is appearing in the national championship match for the sixth time in the first since 2004. They lost to UCLA in 70. They also lost in 73. They won their only title in 1991, also back to the championship in 99 and 04. 1991, that's the old Weva days. They didn't yeah. even have an MPSF or a Big West conference, which was yeah. new this year, and how nice for the Big West. Yeah, good point. First year for the conference to sponsor men's volleyball. They had the best team all year, and their team is here in the championship. And two Southern California teams playing for the national championship, something that hasn't happened in five years. Loyola of Chicago won back-to-back -back in 14-15. Ohio State won in 15, excuse me, 16 and 17. Delay has gone on for quite yeah, some yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, this is taking a long time. A little long. 
no net violation. Wow. It's UCLA's ball. Yeah, net violation. So now both UCLA and Long Beach State have two challenges remaining as our Nitz goes back to the line. And Nitz having a good match. Four kills, eight swings, no errors. To Aniga repeating into the middle to Amato. Amato going right back to the same spot, just trying to hit it harder off JT Hatch, pitches more Hatch's right arm. Amato was a second team All-American, whereas Tuaniga, Ensing, and DeFalco were all on the ABCA, which is the American Volleyball Coaches Association. First team All-Americans. Ma'a and Jimma made the first team for UCLA. That ball missed out of bounds. Service errors are very close. 27 total, 13 for UCLA, 14 for Long Beach State. Ooh, that ball is in. That was really close, Paul, from my perspective. That might be a Hawkeye situation where the ball <laughs> compresses and touches the back side of Come the line. Come on, give me the Barney. Yeah, Barney had it out. Ooh, Ooh, that's close. But the Barney is notoriously terrible. The Long Beach State bench confirmed it, though, that it caught a piece of the line. Good swing by Hessenauer. Good patience by Hessenauer. They've been working on going faster to him on the right-hand side. Sometimes players then get in that rhythm of going too quick. He waited, attacked, caught the ball high. Hessenauer now with 10 kills, Jimma with 11. And UCLA starting to get up to their season numbers in terms of efficiency. After a very slow start, the Bruins on top in the third, 14-13. Third set here at Poly Pavilion in Los Angeles on the beautiful UCLA campus. The Bruins leading 14-13 over Long Beach State, tied at a set apiece. A lot of Olympic and national team connections uh, in this match. And there is number 12 on the right side of your screen, T.J. DeFalco. Last year's team that competed in the World League, and there's his head coach. Well, his head coach next week, John Spira, currently the head coach for his opponent, UCLA. Jim coming situation. out of the timeout. Unique situation now to have yeah. a college coach that is also the national team head coach. No precedent for that before John Spra. Oh, that's going to be a net violation. Tight set. And a dangerous play, too, when you have a player coming up with the net. Essenauer colliding that time with Ensign as they'll pass with four now will Long Beach State against the serve of Kofi Jimma. This is row one. Difficult for a lot of teams opposite on the left. Almost a foot fault might have distracted Jimma and he missed it out of bounds. Just to finish the thought on the two head coaches, John Spira, as you mentioned, doing double duty. The U.S. Olympic team head coach and the Bruins head coach when Alan Knight 
coached the 2012 team that finished fifth. I thought Allen did a wonderful job. Clay Stanley doesn't get hurt. Maybe they finish even better, but that's another story. But Allen Knight took a leave of absence from Long Beach State. Side out numbers are really dropping off now for the country's best offensive team, Long Beach State. 85% in the first set, which is tremendous. 70%, which is very good. Here in the third, down to 57. If you hit above 70, generally you win. Now, of course, that probably entails you holding your opponent to a lower number, but generally 70% will win it, plus 70%. Neither team siding out well in this one. UCLA just above 61. The yard Moose registers the kill, is fourth so far in the match. Ethan Siegfried on to serve. Stabbed by DeFalco. Kill by DeFalco. Unbelievable. That was a beach play. Watch the left hand here. Oh, oh, you can't see it. Left hand, off hand was the dig in a beach fashion. Open hand, scooped it out, and then right into transition with his buddy, Josh Tuniga. DeFalco now 11 kills on 15 swings. Ace serve! Siegfried, not Siegfried and Roy, dialing up a little magic. Long Beach State back on top, 17-16. Back and forth, momentum is hard to get a hold of and hard to keep in this championship match. Well, what a rise it's been for Long Beach this year. T.J. DeFalco, Kyle Ensing, and Josh Tuaniga, the juniors, continue to excel and lead the number one team in the nation. They're back on top with the momentum here in the third. Three zero run for the number one seeded Long Beach State 49ers over UCLA now taking advantage. 17-16 here in the third. Back with two-time Olympian Kevin Barnett. I'm Paul Sunderland. Thanks for joining us. Long Beach State again if you're just joining us. Uh, won the opening set 25-19 UCLA. Clawed back winning the second 25-23. That's trouble. All right, it's another even. The one earlier from Hessenauer and that one from Long Beach State. DeFalco's doing an outstanding job playing center field. He's playing in that middle back spot. We've seen him pick it up off the block, through the block, clean, making all the plays. DeFalco's got seven digs, and a lot of them have been outstanding. Joust coming. Lift could have been called there. And on the tap down, it helps to be six foot ten. What a point. Digs from both sides and DeFalco streaking across. Just yeah. throwing an arm at it. I'm glad they didn't call it. Let him play. Now UCLA back to back points has recaptured the advantage. And yeah, Dylan missed his serve has been perfection in this match. It's really back. He's hitting it hard. He's hitting it with some slice to it. Oh, he 
serve. And there it is. Slicing it off with some heat. You go at the opposite into a short part of the court. You can't do it much better than that. Dylan Misery out of Holbrook, New York. Now with three aces leading the way for UCLA. Three nothing run for Long Beach, answered by Misery and UCLA to take the 1917 advantage. A lot of people think serving's all about power. While power is a critical component, you have to hit the right spot and hit the right person with the right ball. All of those things coming together right there for Dylan Misery. Effective execution from the service line. You mentioned, Kevin, a very busy week of college volleyball out in uh, Gulf Shores, Alabama. Florida State in this double elimination format has secured a spot in tomorrow's final coming up on Sunday at 2 Eastern time on ESPN. UCLA will play a walk Hawaii in the elimination match, the winner of that, to advance. So a big beach volleyball tournament, AVP and FIVB joining forces uh, down in Huntington Beach this weekend as well. John Sprawl mentioned the culture of this program this year to us yesterday when we chatted with him. He said it's never been better. We made huge strides from last year. I, I harken back to when he took over and I talked to him then. His quote then was, guys need to be accountable to the mission they say they want to be a part of. Habits must change. And what these, this team found out back then, what that group found out was, if you won't change, John will help you move right on. He's got an absolutely fantastic group this season. See what Dylan Misery can do. Can he put a little misery on Long Beach State coming out of the timeout? Yeah, maybe a little more. That was a wonderful pass. Arnitz. Down the line and out of bounds. And it's a 4 nothing run for the Bruins. There's the guy Jake Arnitz has to be. Both tonight and moving forward in his career. The terminal left. He already touches up around 12 feet. Watch how high he's in the air here. That's over the top and ripping. And John Spraw loves it. Five kills now for number 15. Ace serve! John Spra told us yesterday at practice Somebody else, somebody unexpected might be a star. Could it be Dylan Misery? Five nothing run for the Bruins. DeFalco is stuffed straight down. Excellent timing from the Bruin block. And you wonder where they were earlier on one of these plays when it was down the middle. Well, here, both guys in, all three guys up together. What a run by Mystery. He just got bounds. Boy, did he do his job. Absolutely. Not only the number of aces, the heat. How about all of them in in a row? Right after that last one, unbelievable. I like the adjustments from Long Beach passing wise though. They pulled Ensing out after he got aced. Ensing is a real weapon. He's got three aces. Handled nicely by Hatch. Back row combination. But Misery violated the three meter line. Yeah, good choice. This is nice offense from Ma'a. So much has gone to the middle. Long Beach has been all over it. Not a ton of bick so far from UCLA. They try to go to it. It was definitely the right call. John Spara talking to the second referee, thinking about challenging, of course, but you can't challenge that particular call. Instead, Coach Spara will use one of his timeouts. Both teams now are out of timeouts. UCLA leading 22-19, tied at a set apiece for this NCAA championship. Well, we've got a moment. Let's take a look at the Capital One Cup standings update as teams compete for a combined $400,000 scholarship donation from Capital One. Stanford, no surprise, 116 national championships all told. UCLA, one behind at 115, followed by the Crimson Tide, North Dakota State, Georgia, Indiana. There you see the entire list. Stanford leading on both the men's and women's side. Nebraska.
congratulations once again to John Cook and all the Cornhuskers for winning the 2017 Women's NCAA Championship. Yeah, that Michaela was, Specky was incredible in that particular yep. matchup. That was in Kansas City this past December. And now they've only gotten better adding Lexi's son, who formerly yeah, started for Texas. That? Women's season coming up at the end of the summer should prove to be another entertaining run. Lots of coverage on ESPN, Family Networks. What about Long Beach State right here? Again, 27 and 1 on the year. They lost a match late in Hawaii, and Alan Knight thought that that situation, that crowd, 9,000 people at the Sheriff Center, got them ready for the tournament. They've been in some tough situations before. Late in the season, they had UC Irvine at home, had to win 3 2, and it was close against the Anteaters. They've been pushed. They've responded. We saw them make a run at the end of the last set. It was 22-19. Remember then? It was 22-all. They can do it again. Ensign, I would go for it right now. Kyle Ensign, you've been in rhythm. Hit it. You've been getting aces. You could spark your team. Back into the momentum in this set. Good pass again. Arnitz again, over the top of the block and just out of bounds. That was very close to the end line. UCLA can side out. They get Kofi Jimma back in the front court. Boy, that was really close. UCLA is one rotation ahead of where they were last time they got stuck in the last set. Thought that ball was out. Thought that was in the blue. Perfect positioning. Oh, and the unforced error. DeFalco taking a chance. The thought was right, but just couldn't get it past the tape. Big break for UCLA. Sam Jones, five foot eight, redshirt freshman out of Manhattan Beach on the serve. Oh, one on one. It helps to get Jimma back in the front court. And Jimma followed. Smart play by him. Look, he's right in front. See him step over. That ball got pushed into the gap. Long Beach likes to set into the gap. Get in front of him late. Set points now. Four of them for Jones and UCLA. And just needed one. Ball was set a little bit too low. And Jimma and our nets made Long Beach State pay. After dropping the opening set, Kofi Jimma and the UCLA Bruins have come back to take the two sets to one lead. They won the second 25-23 and just won the third 25-20. Doing it the net with a couple of big stuff blocks.
Welcome back to Southern California, Westwood, more specifically, the 49th NCAA Men's Volleyball Championship here on the beautiful campus of UCLA. Back with two-time Olympian and two-time All-American out of Pepperdine, Kevin Barnett. I'm Paul Sunderland. We expected a real battle after the semifinals and the level of play we saw there. We knew this was going to be good. But UCLA really got it going from the service line with Dylan Misery. Absolutely. And they brought the crowd back. And that happened back in the second set when there was kind of a make or break opportunity for UCLA. They ran off a couple of points. And you could feel the energy in the building pick up. They've ridden some of that, but they've also ridden Dylan Mystery, who was a huge factor when they had a good midseason run. He was good from the line. This is a guy who's a 5 2 player. He'll pass the ball for you, he'll play excellent defense, he'll get kills when you need him. He had a couple in that set, and then he will rip it from the line. The ripping it from the line's been missing. Well, it's back just in time, and that's exactly what he was focused on yesterday between the semis and the finals. Love to see it for young players when their work and their focus pays off. Look at this. After a slow start, UCLA offensively now is out hitting the most potent offense in the country from Long Beach State. Service aces very, very even. The, air, the uh, service errors could not be more even. Side out percentage for Long Beach State. They hit 478 side out in the first, then 333 in the second. That last set, 091. That's got to be one of the lowest numbers all season long. Really good pressure from the service line by the Bruins. Hey, keep going to that well. All right, Kevin, your Long Beach State. A lot of expectation that this was your year. And with good reason. They've had a spectacular season. They have the National Coach of the Year not only this year but last year. Are they starting to feel some pressure right now? I think the pressure's on them squarely. Definitely in this set. UCLA has taken the crowd, taken the momentum. They've already been beaten twice, but I'll tell you what, what Paul. That's the prescription right there for what ails you if you are Long Beach State. You feed number 11, because not only has it been the numbers that TJ DeFalco has put up this year, but in watching a few matches, it's been when this young man has made plays. He has made them when his team has needed them, and sometimes it's a crazy play you wouldn't expect him to make, like a one-on-one -on -one block against the biggest defender or biggest hitter on the other side. Go to 11 as much as possible in this set to stay alive. T.J. DeFalco, last year's National Player of the Year, a two-time All-American, 12 of 20 so far in the match. Has Long Beach State dropped off a little bit in terms of their serving because UCLA with Ma'a and Jim are just pounding the middle? I think they've tightened up a little bit because they're playing from behind. It's easy to serve hard when you're playing from ahead. Smart swing up into the block, offensive rebound. Well, it's like a pitcher who's ahead in the count. It's easy to throw something with some risk if you're up. If you're behind and you're not feeling the rhythm, which is what's happened at LBSU here, it's more difficult to pound the ball. And so what do you get in return for not pounding from the service line? A face full of 16. That ball missed out of bounds. Dylan Misery is having a fantastic all-around match in that little play. Up into the block, get an offensive rebound, restart the point. Very, very sophisticated play. Well, the story of the offense in the third, where UCLA did not hit great. They hit 208 and side out. Their percentage wasn't great, but it was contributions from all around the dial. It wasn't one guy that carried him the way Kofi did in the second. Good pass by Hatch. That's very close to being called a throwdown. That could have been a throw in the second contact there. Allen Knight's not happy. I thought it was. He's got something to complain about. Hessenauer. Off the block and down. And Allen Knight is still back a couple of plays in his thought process as he talks to our down official. The R2, Bill Wolf. You know, look, I thought it was really questionable, but it's been consistently non-called. UCLA had a couple. Uh, DeFalco had one earlier. They're letting him play. Yeah, Larry Page isn't even out here. They're letting him play. <laughs> uh, a smart swing by Hoos off the edge of the block. Yeah, and Hoos needs that little bit of a comeback. He was so good early in this match. And Bjorn Hoos was neutralized. He's down to 200 before that kill. Now his sixth. The Long Beach, Long Beach 49ers could use some good offense from their smaller outside hitter. He was really good in the semifinals and, and somewhat in an unexpected area at a couple of big blocks. Here's Ensign. Yeah, this guy's got to heat it up from the line. Oh, that ball ripped over the top. Now, I asked you yesterday, Paul, without any lead, 
Who is Dylan Misery in an international context? And you nailed it. Filippo Lanza, of course. From Italy. Who else? <laughs> Guy who was so critical in Italy's run in the Olympic Games in 2016. Built like a rugby player, strong, and playing every aspect of the game. That's Dylan Misery. Go, go. And it's his dog on the back row combination. I'd go to Misery. Into the middle. Martin with the kill. And we, when we bring up Lanza, that is an absolute compliment. Oh, yeah. Going the way of Dylan Nisry, particularly the way he's played so far in this championship. That's an hour misses that one into the top of the tape. A break for Long Beach State. So if you get to Falco's the kind of guy you can set anywhere on the court, I would just start setting him every transition ball, no matter where he is, get it to 11. Misery again down the line. You know, J.T. Hatch, the Libero, the 6'1 senior out of Mesa, Arizona for UCLA, has been really good. And he is so athletic, he played as an outside hitter in one of the two matches previously against Long Beach State. For most of the season. Yeah. And he's an outstanding outside hitter. He's hitting over 300. A lot of teams would kill that, a guy like that. And here's Mystery back again with more aces. How many aces are there in a deck? <laughs> Four. He's cheating. He's got five. Somebody check his sleeves. And look at his body language. This is an athlete who's completely in a zone. 8-4 lead for the Bruins. Well, Dylan Misery came on last year with spot duty as a starter. He's been in 100% this year. Good kill off the right side by Ensign. One on one. Ensign now leading the way with 14 kills on 33 swings. And his efficiency has really fallen off. Remember, he started the match 7-for-7. Seven seven. Served out of bounds by Anderson. Well, you mentioned earlier the fact that Long Beach State replaced all but kind of the big three on their side. For the Bruins, also this year, it was eight new freshmen in the gym. Micah Maha to the setting position by himself without that 6 2. This was a changed team. It's taken them all year to kind of get to where they could be to maximize who they can be. And they have done it in the latter part of this set, the latter part of this match. Anderson again. Last year was almost a lost season for UCLA. So many injuries, including Jim who did not finish the year. Shoulders, knees, ankles, all kinds of stuff. Thumbs. Long Beach State has been incredibly healthy this season. Jimma again off the defense of Molina. And another kill for Kofi Jimma. His 15th kill. And that's just over the top. Here's the contrast for you. Dana Jimma has 23 attempts. You look over to the other side, and it's 11 for the two middles. Five and six make it 24 attempts now. And even on the other middle blocker position, Martin has six. So you have 30 attempts in the middle to just 11. The Falco's trying to do it all now. Not a great set there. Dug by Hatch. Down the line and good. Timeout, Long Beach State, Kevin. Yeah, I think you have to go for it down five now. Hessenauer, unorthodox, but effective all season long. Timeout called by Long Beach State. The Bruins taking advantage of playing at home and getting some production from right around the dial, leading 11-6 here in the fourth.
the UCLA Bruins with a big early lead here in the fourth set. They're going to close out this championship on top 11 to 6. And Kevin, almost flawless offensively are the Bruins. 9 of 12 total attacking, 7 for 7 inside out. Defalco restoring some sense of order. Give it to 11. Every time, wherever he is, that was fast overhead as well. 13 kills now on 21 swings. Just a junior. A lot of speculation that he was going to turn pro after last year, but he's committed to the program. And he's all in right through his entire eligibility and career. And that's a quick guy of bounds by Hessenauer. Yeah, an uncomfortable spot for Hessenauer. Left side, not where opposites spend any time. Just one out of six rotations and a difficult set coming from over the shoulder. If you're Long Beach State, do you commit on Jim on the good pass? You have to. You're not going to stop him if it's set perfectly, but you have to hope you get a hold of him as you get over it. Ma'a with the first contact. Great for Long Beach. Nice hustle defensively by the 49ers. And what's Long Beach doing right now? They're kind of grinding it out with some defense. They're making plays, keeping the ball alive, forcing a mistake like this. And look how many guys are there, even on that play. That ball goes off into the crowd, but they are right there on the 49ers. And DeFalco is their best server by far. And he's at the line. 52 aces on the year, but constant pressure. off the hand of Ensing and out of bounds. And that's the connection that has allowed Jimma to get over 400 sets this year. Even if you're a reasonable passing team, it's hard to set the middle that much. Look how far off the net he is. He is halfway to the 10-foot line, jumping up vertically next to Micah Ma'a. He's the highest scoring middle blocker in the country at over three points per set. Good touch. Ensign turning the ball down the line. I continue to be blown away by Long Beach's ability to extend rallies. They pick up a yellow card. Well, they were screaming about a lift on UCLA's side, but it's been consistent. They're letting them go. So that yellow card we're hearing is picked up by T.J. DeFalco. And he's been getting a little fiery. You saw that all the way back in the beginning with an early net violation call. There are times when you can get T.J. DeFalco a little unbalanced to get him yelling at everybody around him. That has happened. Lewis Richard coming off the bench now. 6'3 junior out of Los Angeles. We saw him in practice. He's got an arm. Good hustle by Long Beach State. Boots just couldn't keep it in play, and the Bruins now leading 13-10. And a reminder, up two sets to one. UCLA has won 19 NCAA championships the last in 2006. Long Beach State has won just one. That was in 1991. Oh, good set. the block and out of bounds once again from Israel. I had my MVP vote if UCLA were to win this set in Kofi Jimma's hands. It might be in Dylan Misery's hands right now. Five aces. Misery seven kills on 14 swings. Also has a handful of digs. Number 12 has been absolutely superb when the Bruins needed him the most to try to pull off the upset. Still a lot of weight, a lot of work to do.
Welcome back to Poly Pavilion once again. UCLA hitting 476 so far here in the fourth, and uh, Kofi Jimma has been very hard to stop. Yeah, except for that first set. It has yeah, been the yeah. Kofi Jimma show. 17 kills on 27. How about that? When was the last time your middle had as many attempts as your opposite? 27 and 28 right now. It happened during the regular season as well. Saw that with UCLA during the regular matchups inside the MPSF. There were times when he led in kills. You don't have a middle routinely lead in kills or nearly lead in kills and attempts. And then you add in that kind of service pressure. Pretty good set to the outside. Hessenauer off the block. Tuaniga is there. Oh, Ma was ready for that. Yeah. He read that play. Two perfect sets by the big guy in a row. What a swing on the wrist away by DeFalco. And it starts before the swing. TJ DeFalco, we talked about the read from Ma'a on the previous contact. He camped in that corner and played that ball with absolute calm and then set into his attack pattern. What a job. Next level stuff, phase to phase of the game by number 11. 14 kills. 10 digs for DeFalco. Ace serve! Said his last time around, Insane was capable and needed to heat it up for his squad. Here he is in his next shot. Kyle Insane trying to match Dylan Misery for UCLA. Insane now with four aces of his own. Up to 35 for the season. Timeout called by UCLA. The Bruins leading two sets to one, and on top 14 12 have called a timeout. ESPN's coverage of the NCAA championships continues tomorrow with the NCAA Beach Volleyball Championship at 2 p.m. Eastern Time on ESPN. For more information, go to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 90. NCAA championships. Let's take a look at the bracket for beach volleyball once again. Florida State has moved on into the championship match. It's double elimination format. So Hawaii lost to Florida State in their semifinal. They will play UCLA. UCLA defeated the defending champions from USC. So they will play in the elimination match tomorrow morning. You can see that's at 11.30 Eastern time. The winner will move on to play Florida State. UCLA, the Pac-12 champion, the CCSA champion is Florida State. In fact, UCLA defeated USC in that Pac-12 title match as well. They've been the number one team since about midway through that season. Opportunity for the Bruins to pick up back-to-back -back national titles, tie and pass Stanford yeah, in this yeah. weekend. UCLA has 115 NCAA total championships. The Stanford Cardinal with 160. What a journey it has been for the offensive part of this game. First yeah. set, it ended 478 for Long Beach to 250 for UCLA. It's now 315, which is a good number for Long Beach, but UCLA is at 351. <laughs> Misery through the seam. What got, a nice connection. Got a break there, excuse me, Kevin, when that jump serve hit the top of the tape. Made that ball a little easier to pass. And a one-on-one -on -one there with the pace to misery. He's taking advantage of that open seam. Oh, he called that one on sound. He called that one on sound. It's right in front of him. Our up referee, Brian Hemmelgarn. Because we've seen a lot dirtier balls come out, but it's a chunk when he hit it here. All I'll say is there have been worse, and he let him go. Indeed. Wow, that was that, just you got to move on if you're UCLA. It yes, happens. You, do. you have the lead. One of the things that John Spira talked to us about with the culture of his team. Got to put that behind you and move on to the next point, let alone, more importantly, just the next contact. I said it'd be fun to watch the beginning of this match. That's because of those kind of plays. Ma'a from 15 feet off the net. 
feasting. He saw that one coming. Like a giant donut flying through the sky. Look who's at the service line. Oh, perfect pass. Do you go middle? Yes, you do. Off the block and out of bounds. What a touch by Hessenauer. Think back to Christian Hessenauer having one of these touches earlier in this match and sending it over the net out of bounds. Here he lays it up on the money. Don't say I don't have ball control. Ball served just out of bounds. Mentioned that UCLA and Pauley Pavilion home in sight of the men's NCAA championship for the 15th time. Where is it next year? Just down the road, 35 miles away at Long Beach State. And they could very well be there as the home side next year in the championship match. The Falco throwing the ball down through the block. If you watch Josh Toomey, one of the really special things about him is his body control. He can be running full speed in one direction and he will stop on a dime and you see him rise up perfectly, composed to deliver a set. Ethan Siegfried, freshman serving specialist out of Honolulu on to serve. And special indeed. The Falco off the block and out of bounds. John Sparrow is going to challenge you again. I wonder if he's going to challenge the exact same thing here. Well, I, my lip reading is not very good. As a matter of fact, it's getting worse the older I get. But I think Coach Barra said it went off him, meaning DeFalco last. Yeah, it's the same argument he made before, and I just don't know that you're going to get it from the replay. Oh, maybe on that one. That one's closer than the other one was. Remember, you get three challenges total. Then challenge ball in or out. Ball off a defender, either blocking or in the backcourt. Foot fault. So this is very subtle, but watch it touch, hold, and then throw. Huh, interesting. Uh, maybe, maybe. I don't know if they'd overturn it. Thing is, it's been called Long Beach's way. You have to overturn it. This strikes me as something that John Spira, the UCLA head coach, has seen on film or video, if you will. That's a good call. Or, or let's remember that he coached TJ DeFalco all last summer. Now, tell, tell, talk us through that play as an outside hitter, Kevin, which you were throughout your career. What are you trying to do? Well, I can first of all say I was never successfully made that play in my career. But you take it, you throw it into the block with your hand. You push into the block, then you wipe. So what John's making the argument is that he pushed in, wiped, and he finished the wipe after oh. the block was contacting the ball. It's close. Yeah, but that's it's what close. you want to do. You want to grab it and push it. You don't want to wipe it immediately. Push it in, wipe it out. And I thought TJ did a nice job of that both times. I agree. That one was closer, but I just don't see how they would reverse it. And they have not Long Beach ball. Remember, the video replay has to be 100% conclusive. I thought it was a good call, an interesting challenge. And the call will stand, and that makes it 17-16. UCLA has one challenge remaining. Long Beach State has two. Here is Siegfried again, who's done a good job serving. Looks away. This time down the middle. Arnett's leaving no doubt up into about the 10th row. Somebody should take that and run up the stairs with it. Out the building. It's yours. They got plenty of them. We were at practice yesterday. They got plenty. Sam Jones now on to serve for UCLA. This should be a good point scoring rotation, even with the front row setter. Puma back to the front row. Oh, nice play. Juaniga going into the middle to Nicomato. Nicomato, number 25, doesn't get many opportunities, but he makes the most of them. Three kills now on seven swings, no errors. 18, 17. He likes the 1 6 space between Hatch and Mystery. Arnett's is stuck. with a rejection. 
5-1 run for Long Beach State. And we're tied at 18. And Amato with back-to-back -back points as well. We talked about the middle factor for UCLA. Right now it's Amato making plays for Long Beach. Long Beach, DeFalco for the lead! How many blockers were there in front of Kofi? There were three, all three 49ers. 6-1 run for TJ DeFalco and Long Beach State. DeFalco has got five kills here in the fourth set. Long Beach State on top by one. You have to feed the guy. When you have the guy, and I don't mean just his kill numbers, but he is the guy when the pressure is on. T.J. DeFalco, time and again this season, has performed when his team has needed him. You have to feed him. That right there is the perfect recipe. You get a hold of Kobe, who's been tearing you up. You do it by having all three guys help, get in front of him, get a touch, and then you hand it to the guy who's supposed to get the points. Gosh, to Aniga. Wearing number 10, the outstanding setter for Long Beach State. He and TJ DeFalco played together in high school their last couple of years. To Aniga from Long Beach, a two time All American and this year's National Player of the Year, as his old friend and high school and now college teammate DeFalco was last year. Must win situation for Long Beach State, the number one team in the nation all season long. Look at DeFalco's numbers. 17 of 25 hitting 520 efficiency and if you're wondering what efficiency in volleyball stats are it's kills minus errors number 11 DeFalco only has four divided by total attempts I'd like to see his attempt numbers quite a bit higher so with the Long Beach fans 6-1 run Long Beach State is riding Close to a throw down. Oh, you're giving me that funny look. Close. You're close. giving me the barn eye out of the corner of your eye. They've let this go they over have. the last few years. So all you old school guys who were complaining, including the whole 91 team for Long Beach over here in the corner who hates it, that is more acceptable now. You see Taylor Sander do it a lot internationally. Okay. Okay. You see guys throw the ball with a little more pace. You can't rear it back. You can't palm it and throw it, but you can push it in a way that I think years ago you could not. That would get called as a lift as they check out TJ DeFalco. If you got a scratch, Across yeah, the cheeks just, there. Just under the right eye. He has been battling. What a match he's had. The 17 kills is one thing. 11 digs and a couple of aces. Somebody get Vinny Pacheco out here. Easy jump serve down the line. Oh, our nits went down. And off the block and out of bounds. The Falco's coming over. That's a dangerous play. That's good sportsmanship. That's an excellent move by, by TJ DeFalco yeah, to yeah. put the hand under. I like that a lot because you never want to see another player hurt. John Spira is challenging. And this will be his last one. I'm not sure what he's challenging. DeFalco was not under. Yeah, it's kind of half and half there almost. Right, but in order for it to be a violation, as you know, your entire foot has to be over the line. The line is kind of a neutral zone, so I'm not sure what John is challenging here, whether he thought DeFalco netted. I've seen it called throughout the years as a preponderance of your foot. If you stick it way under there, you may not have to have the whole size 15 under there. A preponderance? Yeah, it's like a civil lawsuit, Paul. <laughs> preponderance of the evidence. Well, that's a dangerous play. No doubt, and I like T.J. DeFalco Me there. Me too. I'm the guy, look, I want to hit you in the face, and I'm not going to apologize. I'm going to hit you in the face as many times as I can during the match, and we can talk later. But under the net, that situation is different. Nobody wants that to happen to them. Being, being told that John Spira is challenging a centerline violation, but that under the current NCAA challenge system in men's and women's volleyball is not something that can be challenged. He's not, DeFalco's not under anyway. 
internationally, there's dedicated cameras on every line, but you can't challenge that particular area of the game. I'll have to talk to Jake Arnitz after this match and see if that was the Vladi Divac Drama Award that he should be winning from that one, or if he honestly lost his footing. I'm wondering now, does, does Coach Spira get his challenge back? Yeah, DeFalco's not under. No, I think that's not an acting award. That's a little inversion there. You, don't, oh. you do not want to land on a foot that way. And that. players, in fact, will do that. If you feel a footing like that, you can get your feet under, you will collapse back to take the weight off that leg. His challenge was never accepted, we're being told officially from the scorer's table. So John Spira and UCLA still have one challenge remaining. You asked him yesterday what's different when you coach here versus when you coach in <laughs> Yeah. There's one. There's one. There are lots of others. A lot more teaching, obviously, at the college level. And he said, look, when I'm coaching the national team practices over, I watch some film, I go home. But here I got to fundraise, I got to recruit, I got to get on the phone. Play by UCLA. What a clutch pass by the Bruins after an excellent serve by DeFalco. That's not even a good pass for most teams. That's not a middle pass for most teams. Watch where Jim is. He backs off to 14 feet and hits it from seven. He took off straddling the three meter line. 90% of teams don't make that play. Grant Molesky, who was the serving star for UCLA on Thursday night with a couple of aces. The Bruins win over BYU. Can he do something special here? Tied at 20. Must win situation for Long Beach. Oh, God. Must win situation for Long Beach State. They now lead it on the miss, 21-20. Who's just going to be out on the left? I'd look this time for Hessenauer overhead if you can't get it to Kofi in the middle. Misery, brilliant swing off the top of the block. Any team that gets this far into a national championship conversation has a lot of ways to hurt you. UCLA is showing that. Misery now with nine kills. Jim, back-to-back uh, -back service errors for UCLA. Uh, bad timing for the serve of UCLA to go away. Bad timing for Jim to go to the sideline. He's a long way from getting back to the front court for the Bruins. All right, these next three rotations have been rough on the Bruins. This is a good spot for Long Beach. Their best server at the line. Out of bounds. Ball served just over the end line. Tied at 22. Yeah, that's a big win for the Bruins there. Four aces, best server in this match for Long Beach State. Kyle Ensign. And we're going to have a challenge from Long Beach head coach Alan Knipe, whether that ball was in or out. Remember, just to review, three challenges per team for the entire match. You can challenge ball in or out, ball off a player, either in the backcourt or at the net. Net violation, that ball's out of bounds, at least by my eye. Ball in or out, and the last that can be challenged is a foot fault on the service line. Yeah, ball in real time, I had that one out. Yeah, it's tough to see from these two angles. That ball's, uh, that ball's out of bounds. But where's Alan Knipe? He's using this as a timeout. You see right there, the call's already been made. Alan Knipe is still in the huddle. He's right up against it. Alan Knight lots of times. He's the most active coach as you'll see. He's almost in the left front. If they set him, I think he's ready. <laughs> he, he uses a short approach. Tied at 22. Back-to-back -back service errors. This one has to be in. It should be in. It must be in. This is way too many free points in this situation. UCLA donating to Long Beach State. Way too many. And, and what were those three service errors? When did they happen, Paul? T.J. DeFalco was in the back row. You can't get to him as easily. Now he's back in the front row. Advantage Long Beach. Is 
Beasley again. He is hitting the ball high into that block. You can hear the touches. And that time he brought it back a little more line after going so much hard seam. Look who's going back to serve now after this kill. 12 with the kill. 12 with five aces back at the line. Does he take something off since they've missed? No, not Dylan. Anybody else? Yes. That's all right. That's all right. What you don't want is to lead into him that way. You want him going for it. Now, a set point for Long Beach State. Tough rotation for UCLA. Here's the freshman out of Denmark, Andersen. And Arnitz is able to put the ball away. Big moment for Jake Arnitz right there. Set on the line, national championship, your senior season, and you get a power kill where you get enough of it that it caroms way out of play. A gutsy decision, and Jimma was almost right there to slow it down from Tuaniga. Yeah, good read and react. And Arnett just can't get there. Set point number two. Beautiful setting sun here near the iconic Hollywood sign. About 15 minutes, shouldn't, shouldn't measure it in minutes. That's no. dangerous in Los Angeles. <laughs> UCLA and Long Beach. Not measuring this one in minutes either. We are going five for the national championship. Back with Kevin Barnett, I'm Paul Sunderland. 
UCLA has been a high-risk serving team all season long. It came back to bite them there a little bit. But Long Beach hung in, and T.J. DeFalco is just tremendous again. Listen, be at your best when your best is required is a John Wooden quote. Yeah. We're on John Wooden court. However, it applies to Long Beach State in that fourth set. T.J. DeFalco, I said you need to feed him. Josh Tuaniga knew what to do. Six kills on seven attempts. He has 17 in this match, hitting 500. And then you add in plays like that where he's doing it with the defense. He's creating, even if he's not the beneficiary on every single one, He's playing center field. He's popping the ball up, giving his team an opportunity to extend the rally and earn the point. DeFalco, a double-double, 17 kills, 11 digs, a couple of aces. Now the onus, Kevin, back on UCLA and John Spira. And you mentioned it right before first serve. Have we really seen truly the maximum, the very best from UCLA? They're going to need it now in order to close out this championship. I think the block for UCLA has to come back. They have eight in this match. There was only one block in that first set by either side. It was one by Long Beach. It's eight to four, the total advantage. UCLA's got to slow down the hitters. That's five straight service errors for UCLA. The scoring system in the fifth set. To 15, win by two. The teams will change sides at eight this 15-point tiebreaker for a national championship. Oh, well, not a perfect three-ball pass. A break for UCLA. Misery smartly off the block and out of bounds. Remember that play, Long Beach State was way ahead in the point and they couldn't close the deal. I know it's early, but the margin for error is so small, as you know, Kevin. That takes one bad contact that you're unable to clean up. Ace serve! I guess if you're going to end a series of six missed serves in a row, Dylan Misery is going to dial up his sixth ace. Well, he did something smart here. He took a little bit off. He cut that ball. It ends up in a perfect spot, but he did not hit that maximum volume. And that was a bad toss. He left it in front of him. He couldn't muscle it down. And if Misery couldn't muscle it down, that means nobody could. <laughs> not even Philip Olanza. <laughs> Is this UCLA walking a real tight rope here with this many service errors? So many free points. Listen, Misery's been your guy. He has a green light right now. Everyone else got to take it off just a little bit, make Long Beach play. Get your block involved. What a pass. Yeah, no help that time from Hoos. I don't know where he went. He needs to be in there. That's what's been working for Long Beach. Watch the Arn Hoos here. We get a look at him. He's out at the pin. He's not at all involved there. Kofi Jimma now with 20 kills. No touch. Maybe a challenge. Alan Knight, the head coach for Long Beach State, is thinking about it. Alan Knight coached the United States Olympic team in 2012. His counterpart in this match. That ball's out. John Spira led the United States to a bronze medal in Rio. That football, toss football. football. That toss from the moment that thing went up. If you watch servers closely, you can tell from the moment that ball leaves their hand, whether they really have a realistic shot at hitting it. That is 25 service errors for UCLA. And if you're wondering, this isn't like tennis. If you, if you don't like your toss, you can just catch it and go again. Used to be. I know, it used to Late be. Late 90s. Thank goodness. Middle 90s, they, yeah. Thank goodness they got rid of that. You toss it, you got to hit it. Yuval Kotz, who lost to UCLA in this building during his senior season at UH, used to throw it straight up and stand there. Took it as a break. Nits nicely off the edge of the block and out of bounds. For the match now, Long Beach State hitting 327. UCLA out hitting them quite substantially at 379. Remember coming in, it was just reversed. Long Beach State had the best offense in the country. Remember UCLA right behind. Long Beach State came back from 22-19 in that first set. Hang and bang. Falco with another kill. 
Nothing's changed from the beginning of the fourth to right now. You give the ball to number 11. You find him wherever he is. And Singh hoping to add to his four ace total. Classy swing by our Knicks. Ball a little bit inside. You got to get your feet to it, and you have to drive it in order to get that. Sometimes Jake doesn't drive the ball with enough heat. There he did. Nine kills for the senior. Number 15 will head to the sideline. And he's done a really nice job of hitting the ball with pace throughout this match. Molesky will come back on. His last attempt was not pretty. UCLA leading 6-4. Remember, fifth set tiebreaker to 15. That ball inside that time of Misery. Give the kill to Insig, one-on-one again. Interesting read by Misery. He was one-on-one, -on -one, saw the set, and stopped basically in his position of help to the middle blocker. He did not move to the outside at all, and he nearly got it. Tuaniga runs such a good offense. So many one-on-one -on -one attempts. There was six, six feet of line there, and Ensign didn't take it. A service error for Long Beach. We haven't said that much lately. That is the 18th service error for Long Beach State. They have eight aces. That's a pretty good ratio. UCLA has seven aces and 342 service errors. I'm kidding. Only 25. Jones on again to serve. Bruins leading by two. Remember the teams will change sides when one reaches eight. Net violation, net violation. Yeah, yeah, can't hear the whistle. I think you couldn't get the whistle out going and blowing there for a second. I saw him indicate it. <laughs> you mean it's his face turn? <laughs> the little ball wouldn't bounce yeah. around. <laughs> we have a stopped ball. I hate when that happens. Siegfried will come on to serve. Been pretty effective. Good location. He's been a lot of risk away right now. That would be to mystery. I expect him to go down the middle and hit Arnitz. He was hitting Arnitz with that sharp wrist away. Rejected by DeFalco. Jimma has a rather large window. I just missed it. That was up in the skylight. That was a little bit too high. Teams will change sides after this point. Ace serve! That's his move. Wrist away. Ethan Siegfried out of Honolulu, Hawaii, dialing up. A critical ace for Long Beach to come back. King a 3-0 run. Teams will change sides. We'll step aside. Long Beach leading UCLA 8-7. Back at Poly Pavilion. Long Beach State and UCLA going right down to the wire, battling for this 49th all-time NCAA Men's Championship. UCLA trying to make it number 20. Long Beach State trying to make it number two. Back with Kevin Barnett on Paul Sunderland. And Siegfried, after the ace, 
looking to continue a 3 nothing run for the Long Beach State 49ers. This is a tough serve. You don't have this in your gym lots of times unless you have a lefty. Not a lot of guys hit this hard, sharp wrist away from the right side with the right arm. What a play by Enson. Oh, and they let it drop. Sometimes when you have a player in there who hasn't been in a lot, that innate communication so necessary in volleyball fails just a touch. Who has it? Looked like Ensign could have taken an overhand. He's not sure. Normally there's another player behind him that'll take it. Tough spot. Off the block and out of bounds. I was about to say, Micah Maha is really an explosive server, but Long Beach has corralled him most of the match. That was his best attempt of the night. Timeout called by Long Beach State. For the championship, when we come back to UCLA and Pauley Pavilion, will it be the Bruins or the 49ers? UCLA in the fifth set tiebreaker on top of Long Beach State, 9-8. With Falco hitting out on the left side. Amato in the middle. Ensing out of the back row. Michael Ma'a. Ensing, basically nobody up. Ensing can fly, can he? A couple of times we've seen him almost off one foot out of there. He did a nice job stretching to that one as it was a little tight to the net. Credit to Kyle Ensign for getting the kill. That set, that is an excellent set in that situation. Let your player close to it. It's just the right distance off the floor, off the net. An outstanding move by Amato. Hessenauer gets stuck out on the left side when he's the opposite. He usually hits right side five out of six times in the rotation, but they had him out on the left blocking and it might have hurt. UCLA in that particular situation. Really good blocking by the Long Beach State 49ers now on top 10-9. What a match. 49ers have gotten hold of them a few times out there. Yep. Yeah, this is good for the game. The atmosphere inside Pauley. A couple of teams that can travel a short distance. All the alumni coming out to support. And better yet, we've had outstanding volleyball for four sets now, two-thirds of a fifth. Or maybe more. Maybe we're going overtime in the fifth. Long Beach State's only title was in 1991, and the finals have not been particularly kind to Long Beach State. One and four all time for the championship. Five ties, five lead changes so far in this fifth set tiebreaker. And right before I left my house for the match, I got on social media, Kevin. Can you believe that? 
tweeted out and got on Facebook and it's about the match and I said you got to watch this could be one of the best in a long long time welcome to 2009 Paul thank you thank you thank you middle yes good soft block That's an hour again, out on the left. Oh, and he couldn't play it. Amato has shown up big in a couple of moments in this match. This is another one. Remember, he got back-to-back -back points in the last set. Now, all of a sudden, again, he's getting set in the middle. He's getting soft blocks in the middle. He's getting a stuff there and a point. Excellent job by Nick Amato. Timeout called by UCLA, and I got to ask the question, why are they leaving Hessenauer out on the left side? Misery is over on the right. Well, He's been outstanding one. on the left. Yeah, they're stuck in row one. The problem is they can't switch in time after the first ball goes over. They're not able to move those guys. You'd love to be able, after the first ball happens, just say, we're going to switch no matter what happens. We're going to move that spot, and we're going to give up a little bit of preparation on the block to make sure that should we get another transition opportunity, those two guys are better in their comfort zone. Christian Hessenauer has had a good offensive match, but he's been a different, he, he's been outstanding on the right and struggled on the left, and whereas Misery has been superb throughout number 12 for UCLA. They that, gotta make that switch. Yeah, it's totally normal that the opposite struggles on the left. That is an absolute thing that happens all the way up to Olympic teams. You and I, in Rio two years ago, yeah. watched opposite struggle on the left. It's just how it is. They're, they're one rotation out of six. It's been five on the right, coming out of the back row and the front row. It is not easy row one for any team at any level. It is atypical to be successful in row one. Josh Tuaniga. He and TJ DeFalco have played together since they were in middle school, went undefeated in high school. And now searching for a championship together. Four points away. Yeah! And a block on the outside. That one off misery. And now a big lead for Long Beach State. Who made the play? Wow. DeFalco made the play, but now it's been reversed. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Here's the here's official the pointed the wrong way. No, the, it did go off misery, but the argument will be that it hit the antenna first. Ah. And then hit Mystery on the shoulder. There's no question it hit Mystery. Good call, Kevin. That was a bang. Yeah, you're right. absolutely right. Good call. Off of DeFalco, into the antenna, bang, bang, off of Mystery. That's a good call. Good work by the official. And it happened right in front of our up official, our R1. Oh, wait, if they changed it. Now they've gone back the other way. Wow, and, and UCLA should UCLA's got a challenge. Wow, wow. Don't you have to challenge that if you're UCLA? Remember, they rescinded the one challenge, so UCLA's got one left. The only possibility is that the up official did not see a touch missile. Wow. Because it happened too close to yeah. No challenge for the rule, not off the antenna, but off the top of the net. Tuaniga on a good service run here, and I jinxed him until he missed out and out of bounds. Huge break for UCLA. And good job by Sam Coburn, who just came into this match to lay off of that one. He was in there on the left, a rotation that UCLA has used. As you mentioned, Hessenauer struggling on the left. They bring Coburn in for one rotation. Now he's back out. Hessenauer will go to the right. Misery. Missed it out of bounds. One on one, and he missed it. Guess who's in rotation one now, Paul? Uh, Long, Long Beach. Long Beach. Timeout called by the 49ers. That might have been a match ball right there. If Long Beach State is able to side out right there, that might have been too much for UCLA to overcome. But now with the air, they're back within one. And they keep misery on the service line. As a hitter, that is a terrible feeling because you know it's open. You know you're extended. That ball's in the right spot. You feel good with your arm swing. You're trying to crank it down the line. And from the moment that leaves your hand, you know you went wide left. Long Beach looking for their second. UCLA for their 20th. We mentioned that it was a great run for the Midwestern schools, Ohio State and Loyola of Chicago. 
And then UC Irvine under John Spira, he won his three championships as the head coach at UC Irvine in 2007, 9, and 12 before coming north to his alma mater. What a match. Wow, it has had everything. Two very talented, very, very well coached teams. Long Beach State is doing this, hitting zero right now in set number five, and UCLA is also hitting zero. Pressure, a long match, and boy, these teams and their defenses have really figured each other out. I think Bill Misery should get after it here. The one thing he's been missing is the little tail away that he had going early on where he was cutting it from his right to left. DeFalco's over there now, maybe he's trying to stay away from him, but I would go back to hitting that serve. Service error again. Remember, UCLA at the end of set number four when they led 22 to 19, the Bruins missed four in a row. And they've missed four this set, which is only to 15 as DeFalco goes back to the line for Long Beach State. Next serve for UCLA is Jimma if they can get out of this. Well, UCLA must side out. Good pass. Insane. Rolls over the top. Championship point. Going back to the line, had three aces in the semifinals. Must serve hard, must serve in, otherwise the match is over in the championship to Long Beach State. Has to be in, you concentrate on your rhythm here. Whatever your routine is, a little hop, and you concentrate on reaching and snapping. You find a way to grind it out to get through the tough spots in order to come out victorious in the end. That's what Long Beach State did in this match. Down 22-19 in the fourth set. Down two sets to one. Yep, UCLA helped Long Beach's cause with a handful of missed serves. But what a championship match. One for the ages. Long Beach State, now an NCAA champion for the second time and the first time since 1991, and UCLA still searching for that elusive number 20. A look back, Kevin, at championship point. How about where the ball goes? Yes. You've gone all yes. the pins all year long. You developed your middle as it went along. They didn't have many attempts in the middle throughout the mid part of this match, and you have faith in it to go to it for the win. Amato was terrific down the stretch of this match, offensively as well as getting touches, getting stuffs, and cranking his team along. I would have bet you a lot of money that that set was going to go to Ensign to close out the championship. And now, Alan Knipe joins his Olympic counterpart, John Spira, as a coach and a player. He is a national champion. Alan Knipe helped lead the 49ers to a national championship in 1991. And now in his 15th season, 
at his alma mater. He has led the 49ers to their second ever national championship. What, what a match. And he put together the puzzle this year. He had the big three left. The guys who felt like maybe they should have won it over the last couple of years. Ensign, Tuaniga, and DeFalco. He added in a whole host of new guys to create what was the best team all year long and the best team when the final ball hit the ground. So Long Beach State played UCLA three times this year. This was a classic. This was by far the best match of them all. And it was the best when Allen Knipe and Long Beach State needed it. And next year, with the big three returning once again, Long Beach State will host the national championship at the Pyramid. What a contest. The 49th NCAA Men's Volleyball Championship goes to Allen Knipe, TJ DeFalco, Jordan Molina, Josh Tuaniga, Bjarne Hoos, among others. Yeah, Kevin. And the real winner here, too, fans of volleyball yeah. in this game. What an outstanding match. Yeah, no question about that. Three sets to two. Long Beach State wins it in dramatic fashion over UCLA. From my partner, Kevin Barnett, and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Paul Sunderland. Thanks so much for joining us. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. It was a great one.